All right, welcome to the Naval News segment for today. Today we have a special uh, report coming out of the FBI uh, where they have uh, submitted a criminal complaint about two defendants uh, being charged in West Virginia for um, for conspiracy to transmit or communicate restricted data and actually communicating restricted data. This is what happens when people want to take advantage of their position in government and have a secret clearance and access to this restricted data and want to make money off of it. It is essentially espionage, and uh, which would make them, in my opinion, spies, uh, and they should be dealt with accordingly. Uh, this uh, criminal complaint uh, filed by the FBI uh, on October 8th, 2021, uh, this investigation uh, started on April 1st, 2020, uh, and has just been completed and they submitted the paperwork on the on the 8th there uh, the date here says the 9th I'm not sure why there's a discrepancy between the filed date and this one but that's fine uh, the charges for our uh, conspiracy to communicate restricted data and then actual communication of that restricted data what we're going to do here is we're going to go over step by step of what the FBI claims the defendant did um, in chronological order so the defendants are named and this is public record so we're allowed to name the accused i do need to caveat this is everybody that is accused in the united states is allowed due process which means they're innocent until proven guilty so we're going with the assumption of innocence for the two defendants jonathan toby and diana his spouse toby um, the person uh, filing the claim does not give their name, which is their absolute right, because he is a special agent with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, FBI, assigned to the Pittsburgh field office. Uh, he's been a special agent since May 2018. Uh, he graduated Quantico, Virginia, FBI training in 2018. Uh, and it talks a lot about his background, giving the complainant credibility. He was a U.S. Secret Service agent before then. He has a long history of working in this. So we're going to uh, skip a lot of the legal jumbo. Um, there's a lot of legal channels on YouTube that will go through that. We're going to get to what the defendants did. All right, let's begin. Do we want to begin right here? Okay, probable cause. Let's begin with probable cause. Uh, as detailed below, which we're about to get into, the FBI's investigation revealed that Jonathan Toby, a current employee of the United States Navy, has passed and continues to attempt to pass restricted data as defined by the Atomic Energy Act. This has to deal with uh, nuclear power uh, associated with ships and submarines. Country one is the unknown country or the unnamed country he's attempting to pass the information along to uh, with the assistance of his spouse, Diana Toby. Okay. On or about 20, uh, December 20th of 2020, the FBI's attache in country one obtained a package, uh, a, a package representatives from country one had received in April of 2020. So he mails some sensitive restricted data to another country's uh, embassy outside the United States uh, in on April 1st, 2020. And they held on to it for nine months. They had this data for nine months deciding what to do with it. So something that a lot of these knuckleheads that try things like this, they think that they have something valuable that's secret, right? This guy, I think he had a top secret clearance, but so let's just say secret or even restricted data. It's not as valuable as you think it is because a lot of the people that you're trying to sell this to already have this information. And that might be the case here because what he's trying to sell isn't that highly classified. Anyway, it doesn't really matter what it is. The fact that he tried to do it is the crime. So they held on to it for nine months before turning it over to the FBI. This is what most countries will do. Um, short of, say, North Korea or China, who knows where he was trying to send these, because, again, they don't name the country. But he sent it through the mail, a U.S. carrier, uh, and by an unidentified subject to attempt to establish a covert relationship. That's the goal that he wants to do here. The package contained U.S. Navy documents, a letter containing instructions, and an SD card containing specific instructions on how Country One should respond using the encrypted communication platform and additional documents. In the letter, the sender stated a desire to sell documents containing U.S. Navy's information marked confidential. 
Yeah, this is nuclear power plant stuff. I recognize this. Um, digital media files containing technical details, operations manuals, performance reports. By the way, they would want that. I don't know. Uh, the letter requested the transmission of the enclosed technical data to Country One's military intelligence agency. The sender wrote... This is from uh, the accused. I apologize for the poor translation into your language. Please forward this letter to your military intelligence agency. I believe this information will be of great value to your nation. This is not a hoax. Uh, the package contained the material described above was in a brown envelope with four U.S. post postage stamps uh, and a postage barcode that sent April 1st, 2020. That's the day he doomed himself to prison right there. This is the day that he'll never forget. Uh, the return address was at a location in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Subject matter expert at the U.S. Navy with knowledge of documents, including this package sent to Country One, uh, in, informed the FBI that these documents were U.S. government documents and contain restricted data. Uh, whenever I work with NAVC Systems Command, my position is as a subject matter expert. That's, that's my role whenever I'm on contract. I'm not under contract at the moment, but whenever I do contracts, that's my job right there. So they had it verified that, hey, this isn't just some crazy person. He's really sending this confidential data like a moron. Okay, on December 23rd, 2020, the FBI analyzed the encryption keys that were with the SD card sent in the original envelope. There were three keys located with the SD card. Alice Hill, which is the public key, Bob Burns, which is the private key, and a ProtonMail public key. Uh, to in, in cryptography, Alice and Bob are commonly used placeholders in discussions about cryptographic protocols or systems. The FBI noted that the public key, Alice Hill, had two subkeys. The first subkey was used to sign in and certify. The, the, the private key, the Bob Burns, had two subkeys. The first subkey was used to sign in and certify. That's, that's like two-factor authentication right there. That's how, that's how decryption works when you're uh, trying to decrypt something that's encrypted. I'm sorry if that's over your head. It's okay. Uh, the Proton Mail publicly public key had two sub keys as well. Proton Mail is an end-to-end -end encrypted mail service founded in Geneva, Switzerland. Uh, Proton Mail uses client-side encryption to protect the mail throughout the entire transmit. We won't go into this uh, in detail. If you want to learn more about that, Google Proton Mail and how it works. It is a good service. Anyway, FBI begins undercover communication with Alice. So Alice is like the defendant, the accused in this case, because um, we still don't know his real name, right? The investigation is just beginning and he's got the, uh, the first key and Bob is the second key. So December 26, 2020, the FBI initiated the first of several emails to Alice on Proton Mail. FBI utilized Proton Mail account utilizing the pseudonym Bob. The email stated, we received your letter. We want to work with you. It has been many months, so we need to know if you are still out there. Please respond to this message. Uh, then we will provide instructions on how to proceed. It wasn't, and that was, that was in December, ladies and gentlemen, in February 10th, 2021, Alice finally responded. He finally checked his proton mail and saw the message. He says, thank you for contacting me. I'm still here. The COVID disease has made it more difficult to find chances to check this email. Let, let us discuss how to proceed. Two weeks later, the FBI agent acting as an undercover in undercover capacity or UC responded, said, we understand the delay and hope you are well. Our experts reviewed the information you provided. You, we would like a sample of your U.S. Navy specific sections information. We have trusted we have trusted friend in your country who has a gift for you to compensate you for your efforts. Um, another week goes by March 5th, 2021. Alice replies the following. I am uncomfortable with this arrangement. Face-to-face -face meetings are very risky, as I am sure you understand. I propose exchanging gifts electronically for mutual safety. I can upload documents to a secure cloud storage account, encrypt it with a key that I provided you, because they already have uh, the both public and private keys now, they, so they can decrypt without further communication. The same thing, as long as they use those encryption keys. You can send me a suitable gift in Monroe cryptocurrency, which is like it's a cheap version of Bitcoin, okay? It's Monroe, uh, to an address provided. 
Um, so that would be like a Bitcoin wallet or something. Uh, 100,000 US dollars should be enough to prove to me that you're not an unwelcome third party looking to make trouble for me. When I have confirmed the receipt of your gift, I will provide you the download link. We are both protected. I understand this is a large request. However, please remember, I am risking my life for your benefit. I have taken the first step. Uh, please help me trust you fully. So there he is asking for money for secret material. Uh, he's done, man. He's right there. He's done. Uh, according to the public sources, Monroe is a decentralized cryptocurrency that uses a publicly distributed ledger with privacy enhancing technologies to obfuscate transactions and fungibility. Okay. Um, in March 18th, 2021, the undercover posing as a representative of Country One wrote, we understand a face-to-face -face meeting would be uncomfortable. We suggest a neutral drop location. When you visit the location alone, uh, you retrieve a gift and leave behind a sample we request. We hope you have a very long friendship that benefits mutually. A few days later, Alice replies, I understand your proposal and start a dead drop. I am concerned that using a dead drop location your friend prepares makes me very vulnerable. If other interested parties are observing the location, I will be unable to detect them. I'm not a professional and I do not have a team supporting me. I'm also concerned that a physical gift would be very difficult to explain if I am questioned. For now, I must consider the possibility that you are not the person I hope you were. You are. I would, it would be very easy for the serial numbers of bills to be recorded, tracking devices and other nasty surprises be considered as well. I propose to modify your plan in the following ways. One, I will place a sample you requested on a memory card and place it in a drop location of my choosing. I am not a professional. I am sure the public, the publicity available information, publicly available information of the subject is incomplete. The samples of the encrypted using uh, GNUPG symmetric encryption with a randomly generated passphrase. All right, so that's how they're going to break it, I guess. Uh, I will tell you the location and how to find the card. I'll also give you a Monroe address. This form of gift protects both of us as well. I am very aware of the risks of blockchain analysis of Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and believe Monroe gives both of us excellent deniability. Four. Once I am confirmed recipient of your once I confirm re receipt of your gift, I will give you the passphrase. Your friend and I will never go to the same drop location twice. I will give you new Monroe address each time. Uh, decryption key will be different each time. He's thinking way too deep into this. Does anyone in chat see his mistake? Before I point it out to you, put it up in chat. I'm going to continue reading. He's already doomed himself. And let's see if you guys caught on to it. Uh, the, the decryption key will be different each time. No patterns for third parties to observe. The only electronic footprints will be proton to proton mail. So there's less risk of encryption traffic being collected for future analysis by third parties. Uh, the part, that part is not perfect. Perhaps the friendship we develop will change addresses periodically. Okay. In uh, April 1st, 2021, the one calendar year later from him beginning this, uh, Monroe... Uh, too much talk, more action, conspiracy, too planned. The too planned guy, uh, who are you, Dino? You're very close. Uh, I'll, I'll explain where he went wrong after we read a little bit farther into this. On, on April 1st, 2021, the undercover posing as representative of Country One responded to Alice stating, we understand your concern and appreciate the thoughtful plan as a sign of good faith. Trust we wish to pay you the equivalent of $10,000 US, US dollars immediately on Monroe. Remember, he's asking for 100000 He's going to get ten. To, to the address you provide. Drop locations are the safest and allow us to make exchanges without coming into contact. And of course, leave no electronic footprint. Your proposed method of memory card with encryption phrases is acceptable. For the small sample we request, you'll receive another 20,000 USD. Once you confirm your Monroe address, we will activate payment. Our next step will be uh, will be information on the drop location we have selected. Uh, this method will build trust between us for larger transactions in the future. Our experts are interested in the information, but you have to insist on maintaining our discretionary and security procedures as a priority. So the FBI is picking the drop location. And that's the thing is uh, the FBI at this point really 
doesn't know who this person is. They just know that he's got data that's real somehow. Somebody is compromised in the United States Navy uh, system. This is the same system I'm a part of. I mean, I was probably a suspect. Everybody, until they know this person, is, is a freaking suspect. Uh, so they need to see who this person is. That's why they're picking the, the location. And the second thing, you don't want the, the uh, suspect to pick the location because they could pick something that's really hard to survey and figure out who he is. So you want to pick the one that you know that you're set up for. So that's why the FBI is doing that. And that's, that's the mis brief. His mistake is that he is an idiot. He is an idiot too, Bears. Yeah, that's his first mistake. He's an idiot. He thinks that this is going to work. And the second one is he's agreeing to do a dead drop. And even though you don't see the person, that doesn't mean the dead drop won't be observed. Of course it's going to be. And that's how they're going to identify this person. Okay. The FBI conducts a signal operation in the Washington, D.C. area over Memorial Day weekend. This is April 9th, it says here. Memorial Day weekend. Huh. Another day certainly don't have it, but okay. On April 9th, 2021, Alice wrote, I am sorry to be so stubborn and untrusting, but I cannot agree to go to a location of your choosing. Uh, I must consider the possibility that I am communicating with an adversary who has intercepted my first message and is attempting to expose me. Would not such an adversary wish me to go to a place of his choosing? He's right on about that. His instincts are right. Uh, knowing that an amateur will unlikely be detected by surveillance. If you insist on my physically delivering a package and there must be a place of my choosing, I ask you to consider the viability of an electronic dead drop. I can establish an encrypted online storage account without providing any identifying information, uh, without provoking any suspicion. Another possibility occurs to me. Is there some physical signal that you can give me to provide your identity to me? Uh, I could plan to visit Washington, D.C. over Memorial Day weekend. I would just be another tourist in the crowd. Perhaps we could fly a signal flag on your roof, something easily observable from the street, but nothing to arouse adversaries' um, suspicion. So he's throwing out ideas out there. Uh, he doesn't want to go to a drop point that they choose. Uh, on April 23rd, undercover posing as representative from Country One emails the following. You do not need to apologize. We appreciate you being careful. That is a much better than someone reckless. Uh, your thoughtful plans indicate you're not an amateur. This relationship requires mutual comfort. There is risk on both sides. We understand your need for safety assurance for who you are communicating with. As you suggest, you can accommodate a signal in the Washington, D.C. over the Memorial Day weekend. We will set a signal from our main building observable from the street. Uh, it will bring you comfort with signal on display from an area inside our property that we control and not an adversary. If you agree, please acknowledge. We will provide more instructions about the signal. We hope this plan will continue to build necessary trust and comfort of your identity. May 5th, Alice writes, I will make plans to be in the Capitol over Memorial Day weekend. It would be best to leave the signal visible uh, for the entire holiday weekend so I can plan to pass by in on a neutral course on my tourist day. It may be on foot. It may be in a bus or a car or a bicycle. So please plan for something easy to spot. On May 17th, 2021, undercover posing as representative country one responds. We are happy to set a signal to bring you comfort and build uh, necessary trust between us. Signal will be inside our main building on Saturday morning until Sunday evening, Memorial Day weekend. During the weekend of May 29th to 30th, 2001, the FBI conducted an operation in the Washington, D.C. area that involved placing a signal at a location associated with country one in an attempt to uh, comfort uh, gain the bona fides with Alice. I wonder what country this is. I'm becoming more and more interested as to who it was because obviously that country is aware of this, but doesn't want any part of this. Because remember, they had it for like nine months before they gave it to the FBI, this information. Okay, on May 31st, 2021, the FBI received confirmation of the proton mail. Uh, Alice wrote, now I am comfortable telling you uh, your assumption that Pittsburgh would be a convenient location far for me is incorrect. For now, I can tell you that I am located near Baltimore, Maryland. Please let me know when you're ready to proceed with our first exchange. Once you have drop location details for me, I will give you Monroe address and prepare the sample you have requested. Alice went on to request clarity um, of the U.S. Navy information requested by the undercover posing as country one. So the FBI pays Alice $10,000 and good faith and trust in this cryptocurrency. On June 4th, 2021, uh, undercover posing as country one requested the Monroe address, Alice, uh, and provided a payment of $10,000 US dollars as a sign of good faith. Undercover was informed Alice and the new communication instructions will be provided to the exchange location. Four days later, on June 8th, Alice writes back, for maximum security is very important that you do not send Monroe to the same address twice. Alice then provided the FBI with a payment address. 
Alice went to state, I will place information you have requested encrypted on a memory card along with the address for the second payment you offer in the plain text file. After I confirm the second payment, I will provide you with the decryption passphrase using the new communication method. I'm also excited to continue in our relationship. June 10th, the FBI paid Alice an approximate $10,000 in Monroe currency. So that's when he got a little bit of money there. On June 17th, Alice thanked the FBI for the first payment and said, eagerly awaiting for your instructions. Okay, the FBI conducts a dead drop operation in Jefferson County, West Virginia. So now this is why they filed these charges in West Virginia, because this is where the exchange uh, of restricted data is going to happen. This is where the communication of restricted data, this is the crime itself, is going to happen. Everything up to this point is kind of like conspiracy to commit this crime, but now he's going to actually do it. He's already in trouble, by the way. Just just planning this is bad. But now they're going to try to get him to actually communicate restricted data. On June 18th, 2021, Undercover Posing as Country One emails Alice to provide details and instructions of the dead drop location in Jefferson County, West Virginia, to occur on June 26th. Undercover discuss instructions regarding the next payment to Alice, as well as additional assurance that Alice would be paid $20,000 upon sample verification on authors authenticity of the information provided at the drop location. June 3rd, three days before the drop, Alice sends to the FBI a confirmation email saying, I understand your instructions. I'm ready to move forward. June 26th, at approximately 1041 a.m., FBI observed Jonathan Toby physically service a dead drop location, physically service a dead drop location in Jefferson County. This is where he got busted. They were waiting for him. Now, they probably didn't arrest him right here, but this is where they know who he is now. Uh, records show that Jonathan Toby is a government employee working as a nuclear engineer for the United States Navy, and he's a piece of crap. He holds a top secret clearance. Oh, boy. Um, through the United States Department of Defense and an active Q clearance through the Department of Energy. Jesus Christ. On the same date and time, the FBI observed Jonathan Toby's spouse, Diana Toby, standing approximately one meter away, so she was right next to him, uh, during the servicing of the dead drop location. Based on my experience and training, it appears that Diana assisted Jonathan uh, during the dead drop operation. Diana Toby appeared to act as a lookout for Jonathan Toby during the drop and survey the surrounding area. Therefore, Diana Toby signaled to Jonathan to proceed on a trailer on a trail rather after Jonathan Toby completed the drop. Records show that Diana Toby is a faculty member and humanities teacher at Annapolis, Maryland. Uh, both Jonathan and Diana reside in Annapolis, Maryland. Now they've got them both. At least they know who they are now. Following the servicing dead drop, both Jonathan and Diane were observed walking through a more populated area near the location of the dead drop. From my experience training, it appeared that both Jonathan and Diana were conducting surveillance detection routes, meaning they were moving in a way to attempt to detect whether they were being surveilled or followed. In total, the FBI observed Jonathan and Diane arrive in the location of the dead drop approximately 944 and depart the location approximately 1122. During this approximate time frame, FBI observed vehicle registration to Jonathan uh, parked in the visitor's parking lot. Not that that would have made much difference, but that was a mistake, too. Don't do that. Jesus. This guy is not smart. Anyway, uh, later on the same day, June 26th, the FBI uh, recovered the blue 16 gigabyte scan disk SD card left by Jonathan Toby at the dead drop location. The SD card was wrapped in a plastic was wrapped in plastic and placed between two slices of bread on an on a half of peanut butter sandwich, uh, half the sandwich was housed inside the plastic bag. Okay, so a peanut butter sandwich with an SD card wrapped in plastic in it. Kind of clever. Okay. The reason why the peanut butter is important is that it will hold the thing in place so it doesn't just bounce around in there. Uh, on June 28th, 2021, Alice sent a proton mail providing uh, the payment address. The same date, FBI electronically paid Alice approximately 20000 US dollars in Monroe, Monero. So he's got a total of 30,000 at this point. On June 29th, Alice provided a password for the FBI to, incre to encrypt the Proton Mail message. The FBI subsequently opened the SD card and provided contents to the U.S. Navy subject matter expert. Uh, the U.S. Navy determined that multiple documents of the SD card contained restricted data. He's, he's done. 
Uh, specifically, the U.S. Navy subject matter expert determined that several of the documents contained military sensitive design elements, operating parameters and performance characteristics of the Virginia class submarine reactors. Are you fucking kidding me? The SD card uh, contained the following type message. I hope your experts are very happy with the sample provided. And I understand the importance of the small exchange. I, most of the material I possess is similar format, multiple pages per sheet. Uh, drafted drawings are split over several regular sheets to provide good detail. Uh, I use color where it seemed important, like graphs with several lines. I expect our new communication instructions will be just as clear and safe as your last drop instructions. However, I suggest you continue to monitor your Proton Mail uh, until I'm able to establish contact with your new method. If there is a problem, I will use this to request help. All my previous emails have been signed. Yours truly, Alice. If it is ever necessary to proton mail proton you again, I will end the email with sincerely Alice. Instead, to assure the message is from me that I am not under duress. So, yeah, adding a little code phrase there for it. For now, I propose that we continue the weekend exchanges at suitable parks and trails similar to this one. Details of my daily routine may narrow an investigator's search too much. If you're organized to, if your organization is infiltrated by adversary one day, hiking and visiting historical sites is easier to explain than unexpected stops during rush hour if they ever take special interest in me. If we are to continue using this method of exchange long term, it is very important that we have much flexibility in timing my deliveries as possible. I would like to create a natural legend, a natural legend of my for my interest in visiting a particular place in the future. Reading articles about 10 fun things to do in Baltimore this month and stumbling across a beautiful hike close to home, for example. He's building alibis right here. Bad weather on uh, one day might ruin that cover story. I hope you'll forgive my excessive caution. I want the relationship to be very successful for both of us. And that means that I must be very careful at every step. Yours truly, Alice. Didn't he just verify? Well, I guess from after this one, it's going to be sincerely Alice. But okay, so this will be the last time he uses yours truly, Alice. In addition, FBI analysis SD card showed that it contained metadata, metadata indicating that the card had been connected to a computer with the same version of Macintosh operating system that the SDR, you know, man, freaking Mac users. They think they're better than everybody else. Uh, investigation reveals Jonathan Toby is a U.S. Navy technical expert on the information passed through April 2020 package and at June 2021 dead drop with a prior working history of U.S. Navy facility located near Pittsburgh. All right. We're almost done here, guys. I know this is getting long winded, but this is really interesting how it's step by step, how they knew this, who this guy was as of this point, And they kept him on the hook just to make sure that, you know, he was committed to continue doing this every weekend throughout the summer, just this past summer. Okay. As indicated above, the FBI determined that the John and Toby performed uh, June 26, 2021 dead drop described above. Jonathan Toby has worked with the U.S. government since 2012. In October 2012, Jonathan worked on matters of naval nuclear propulsion, uh, has been assigned to Reactor Engineering Division of U.S. Navy, which is responsible for new operating reactor plant noise vibrating technology for assisting reactor plant shock technology design, manufacturing, and testing. Jonathan has been assigned to the BETIS, or BETIS, BETIS Atomic Power Laboratory, a U.S. government-owned research facility in Pittsburgh, suburb of West, West Milf. Milflin, Milflin, Pennsylvania, that works exclusively with the design and development of nuclear power for the U.S. Navy. During one or both of these assignments, Jonathan Toby had access to U.S. Navy information passed in both physical letter and to country one, as well as electronic U.S. Navy information passed in the dead drops. Wow. So September 28th, we're getting close to today's date. So it's got to be near the end on September 28th. Oh, 2017. <laughs> Sorry. We're going back in time now. Uh, Jonathan was released, discharged from active duty. So he was active duty until 2017. Uh, he maintained a reserve obligation until 2030. So he was a single enlistment sailor unless he was an officer. I don't know. It doesn't really say, does it? Um, I mean, he he might have been an officer. The reason uh, listed for separation was completed required active service. That's typical. Well, it could be either way. Okay. I don't know if he was enlisted or an officer. Uh, on March 25, 2020, Jonathan Toby's top secret clearance was renewed. Hold on. 
right before he began this. Whoa. So he just had his background check done. They just called his fa- friends and family, said, hey, is this Jonathan guy a stand-up guy? And everyone's like, yeah, sure. He seems good to me. Five days later, he's trying to sell secrets. This guy's a piece of work. Uh, the FBI conducts dead drop operation in the South Central Pennsylvania. Uh, concurrent with the investigation into Jonathan Toby and Diana Toby, the FBI planned the next dead drop uh, in South Central Pennsylvania. On October 31st of this year, uh, they traveled from their Annapolis, Annapolis residence to South Central Pennsylvania, where uh, Jonathan was observed servicing the dead drop. While Jonathan serviced the dead drop, Diana was nearby. When John finished servicing the dead drop, he signaled for Diana to follow him as he departed the location. Within seconds, the FBI observer observed Diana following Jonathan as he departed and located the, the location of the dead drop. FBI observed Jonathan and Diana arriving and departing in the area in the same vehicle they used to travel uh, to and from the dead drop in June 26th. So they're not using a rental car, which is smart, actually, but they're using the same car, not smart. Uh, later the same day, July 31st, FBI recovered a 32 gigabyte SD card. Well, they're getting fancy now. 32 gigabytes uh, from the location. The SD card was hidden in a Band-Aid wrapper with a Band-Aid inside a clear Ziploc bag. The FBI has observed Jonathan removing the Ziploc bag from his left shorts pocket, placed the bag in the FBI designated container, and remove a written message from the FBI had placed in the container for him. The SD, got, SD card contained the following message from Alice. Uh, the, the word redacted appears in the original message contained classified information. need a drink after reading this. I need a drink after hearing this. We all need a drink after this. <laughs> yeah. Have our own drink. Thank you. Yeah. Sorry if I'm getting dry mouth here. Uh, it's a lot of reading, but I find this extremely compelling. Okay. So the message that Alice wrote, this is from the suspect. You cannot imagine my relief finding your letter just where you told me to look. Indeed, this has been a long journey, and I'm very happy to have a reliable professional partner in you. I'm sure my unconventional approach was boring to your superiors. Thank you for taking the risk. You may have uh, built mutual trust. We need to go forward. I appreciate your compliment to my efforts to secure your communication, our communication. It was very challenging for an amateur to quietly gather information on how to reach you. He did a lot of the first steps, right? Proton mail encryption. He jacked it up when he physically left his house to go do something. Cause then they could figure out who he was and he went to the same spot. Anyway, back to the piece. Now that we have established a more secure method to write, please tell me if I made a mistake and if you have advice on how to accomplish a task so that I can improve my skills and reduce our shared risk. For example, thank you for the reminder to use cash only. I've been doing so at every step. Do not feel insulted at all since my self-education uh, is sure to have gaps. It is likely not you know all the things that are simple and obvious to you. Okay. Uh, we, you have anticipated my need for flexibility and timing and deliveries perfectly. A use of the new Proton mail with code method in your letter is a good solution. My new Proton is actually an old one I established quietly with a cash only burner phone while on vacation several, several years ago. My original contact plan was to give the login details to you, but I abandoned it needlessly as needlessly complicated. So it has been unused ever since for any purpose, except to sign up for a few innocent randomly chosen mailing list, uh, <laughs> generate regular interesting traffic. Okay. I will continue to use public Wi-Fi and the tour onion connection from proton to prevent adversaries from watching tour entrance and exit nodes. That's pretty smart. Tor is compromised now, by the way, um, for those of you that don't know that, but it used to be secure. Uh, in your letter request that I sent two protons, one of the Monroe address and one of the decryption keys, uh, on the last SD card, I included the Monroe address as an unencrypted file, number one.txt. My idea was your payment for the right amount and right address tells me you successfully uh, retrieved the card. My sending the keys to you tells me I've received your letter and payment and I'm ready to take the next step. The only small advantage, the, yeah, the only small advantage to my plan is that you do not need to wait for my proton uh, with my address. Is there a reason it is safer to send address separate from the encrypting data? I will follow the plan in your letter unless you think it's better to change. Uh, as I said in my last letter, I hope our, your experts are very happy with the sample provided. In total, I possess the following documents. Redacted. 374 pages 
uh, including tables and contents, additional sections. I'm just curious, what does he have? Yeah, what is this stuff? A high level summary of the redacted design. So we can assume that redacted is some sort of power plant. Uh, second one is 1,300, uh, 1,032 sheets rather. Pres uh, scale drawings, okay. Then he's got almost 8,000 pages. Holy crap. This guy has a ton of documents. Almost 2,000 pages of schematic drawings. Oh my word. Similar in format and scope are highly levels, high level summaries. This is a lot of information he was ready to give up. Holy crap, dude. This is nuts. This is not a small crime. He had planned to go big. All right, we're going to begin right here. He says, I have divided the redacted into 51 packages. All have, uh, all but the last have 100 sheets each. So 51 times 100. How many of that is? That's what, 5,000? Or 50,000 sheets of paper. Wow. The first contains uh, the first redacted of the first drawings. If I understand your letter correctly, you offer an additional 70,000 US dollars, Monroe, for the redacted. I propose the same payment schedule for the remaining files. 100,000 Monroe for each of the 49 packages, not an additional for 51, total of $5 million. He wants a total of $5 million over 100, over 51 drops on a, one a weekend. So that's like a year. So over the next year, every weekend, he'll drop a package and he'll get $100,000 every weekend. Wow. Uh, the amount per transpa transaction is in part a security measure. As you note in your letter, U.S. security forces are lazy. They also have limited budgets. He's telling the FBI that security forces are lazy. It's funny. Um, bait of a 10,000 or 20,000 USD to catch an agent are within the normal activities. 100,000 U.S. dollars or more, they may, they may offer it, but will not deliver such a large amount. New reports confirm that this is a common tactic used by U.S. security forces to expose agents. Please do not be offended by this, but your generosity so far matches exactly what the adversaries likely play to entrap me. So his instincts again are right. He's like, hey, these, these levels of payment are what the FBI is authorized to do to confirm or see what the scope of a crime is. Not 100,000, no. No. Okay, he says, uh, we can exchange multiple packages at a time. Okay, so he wants to get this done quick, it looks like. If your superiors are more comfortable with that arrangement for security, I would strongly prefer not to make 50 separate drops to complete our business. But I understand you will want experts to evaluate the delivery. Uh, maybe best to start with one package and increase as our trust goes. I suggest a simple code sent through Proton. Uh, email the number of packages you want uh, at the next drop. One, two, and so forth. Uh, yours truly Alice. See, he's not sticking to his code. Um, unless he meant that he would say sincerely Alice if he was under duress. Yeah, that's probably what he meant. So if he changes his sign off, nothing matters. But because he said yours truly, you know, he's fine. Okay. Uh, as a reference above, the Tor network is an open source that enables anonymous communication. We're not going to talk about Tor. If you want to know more about Tor, Google it. Let's get back to what he's doing. I want to see all the way up to the moment he's arrested. So the FBI conducts dead drop operations in Eastern Virginia. Notice how they're changing these locations from West Virginia to Southern Pennsylvania to East Virginia. Now on August 27th of this year at 11, 12 PM, FBI observed Jonathan Toby depart his Annapolis res residence as a sole occupant of the vehicle. He didn't bring his wife this time, carrying a backpack. Approximately 11.35, so he was only like 20 minutes away from this drop location. Uh, he sent a message confirming the, the dead drop date of August 28th. Uh, the same day at 11.36, House provided the Monroe address FBI the proton message. At 11.52 the same morning, uh, the FBI observed Jonathan returned to his Annapolis residence as the sole occupant of the same vehicle. So I believe that he's leaving his home to send emails, which is extremely smart to do. So he's not using his home Wi-Fi. Very smart. Same thing with a cell phone. Okay. Uh, August 28th, FBI uh, observed Jonathan servicing the dead drop that they had discussed. FBI observed Jonathan placed the item in the container and remove the written message placed in the container by the FBI. The FBI did not observe anyone assisting in the service of the dead drop. Jonathan had arrived at the dead drop operating vehicle in which he was the sole occupant. 
Wow. So he did that one. On the evening of August 28th, the FBI electronically paid Alice $70,000. They did give it to him uh, for a total amount of 100,000 US dollars in Monroe cryptocurrency. Whoa. So they know they got this guy. I wonder why they did that. Why didn't they just nab him right there? I don't know. Let me, maybe it tells us. August 29th of this year, at approximately 8.59 a.m., FBI observed Jonathan departed his Annapolis residence as an operator vehicle uh, occupied by one of his minor children. Uh, he was also carrying a backpack. At approximately 9.35, Alice provided the password to the FBI for encrypted Proton message. The FBI subsequently opened the SD card and provided contents of the U.S. Navy subject matter experts. Uh, the U.S. Navy subject matter expert determined multiple documents in the SD card contained in restricted data. Specifically, the U.S. Navy subject matter expert determined uh, the document contained schematic designs for the Virginia-class submarine. Virginia-class submarines are nuclear-powered cru uh, cruise missile fast attack submarines, which incorporate the latest stealth, intelligence gathering, and weapons. So this goes beyond just nuclear power. This right here, this is like systems information. That's really sensitive. I don't even talk about this on my streams, even as a joke, much less do anything like this, uh, because we just leave this topic alone. This is crazy. Okay, in addition, the FBI analysis of the SD card that it contained metadata indicating that the card has been connected to a computer with the same version of Macintosh operating system uh, from the package postmarked April 21. So he did not change. He's using the same computer essentially a laptop it looks like the entire time not that that would have made much difference but it helps obscure your uh, trail if you don't use the same laptop i'm not i don't know how you would do that you could spoof your laptop there's software out there that will spoof your hardware address uh so you could you could have done it that way he could use the same laptop um if it was windows 10 he could have spoofed his hardware name and serial code and they likely would not have caught on to that. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not going to try and help anybody. Never mind. I probably should shut up. Uh, okay, the SD card uh, helping the type uh, message from Alice. He says, first, I'm very sorry for the confusion about this drop. When I first read your letter, I didn't check what day of the week your proposal date uh, was assumed. I assumed it was Saturday. I was horrified to notice this detail while rereading your letter to the walk through uh, the exchange location one last time before sleeping. I hope my amateurish mis mistake caused you no serious trouble. When I looked at your proposed drop site on the map, it, I was at first very alarmed considering the rules you explained in selecting the location. It does not seem to be a very good neighborhood. However, I place my faith in your experience and happy for the outcome. I have considered the possible need to leave on short notice. Should that ever become necessary, I will uh, be forever grateful for your help. Uh, extracting me and my family surmise the first step would be unannounced travel to a safe third country where plans to meet your colleagues. We have passports, cash set aside for this purpose. They're ready to leave the country and go to whoever this is. So it's clearly not North Korea. That's who I thought it might be. It might be China. They might be willing to live in China, uh, which would be a really bad idea. They wouldn't be treated well over there. I don't know what they think it would happen, but we still don't know what this country is. Okay. He says, I pray such a drastic plan will never be needed, but you are right. This is a comfort to know that you are ready and willing to aid us. Please let me know what I should do to prepare for this last resort. Uh, you asked if I'm working alone. There is only one other person I know of that is aware of our special relationship. I trust that person absolutely, probably referring to his spouse. Uh, I was extremely careful to gather the files in files I pro possess slowly and naturally in the routine of my job. So nobody would suspect me of my plan. Uh, we received training and warning signs to spot insider threats. We, uh, we made very sure not to display even a single one. I do not believe any of my former colleagues would suspect me if there is future investigation. Wow. Uh, let's skip down to the bottom here. Let's go to the conclusion. Here we go. Cause uh looks like they did another drop on August 29th, but yeah. Okay. Let's go to the conclusion. Uh, based on foregoing their probable cause uh, from or about unknown date, but no later than on or about April 1st, 2020 uh, through October 9th, which is a few days ago, uh, Saturday, it looks like the Jefferson County, West Virginia, within the Northern District of West Virginia, elsewhere defendants, Jonathan Dino lawfully and unlawfully having possessed possession, access to and control over and being entrusted with documents, writing, sketch plans, notes. Oh man, they're just going down the list incorporating restricted data within uh, the Atomic Energy Act. Did combine, conspire, confederate, agree 
to uh, have a tacit understanding with each other to communicate, transmit, and disclose the same to another person with their intent to injure the United States to secure the advantage and advantage to a foreign nation. During this period, a conspirator com committed at least one overt act in furtherance of the conspiracy in Northern District of West Virginia, which is where they're filing the charges. That's important that they establish one of these happened here, and this is why we're filing these here. On or about June 26, 2021, Jefferson County, West Virginia, Northern District of West Virginia, defendants Jonathan and Diana, having possessed access to and entrusted with a document, I'm not going to read, that's like a repeat. Uh, here we go. Performance characteristics of the Virginia class submarine. This is a different, I see they're citing each one, what they gave with each one. And, uh, oh, they give the name. This is the name of the special agent, Justin Van Tromp. Well, congratulations, Justin Van Trope. I believe you've got a solid case here and you got your man and your woman. Honorable Robert W. Trumbull, United States Magistrate Just, uh, Judge. Okay, he signed that he received this. Okay, I thought this might be the uh, warrant to go arrest, but no, that's not the same thing. So Justin Van Trump, congratulations. Well done. Good job catching these guys. Now, again, like I said in the beginning, they're they're allowed due process, but this evidence is pretty convincing to me uh, that they uh, were up to no good. All right. Sorry that took so long to read. What do you guys have for us? Um, yeah. Oh, I have to credit just about everybody on the Internet emailed me this story. So thank you, uh, Earth. Yeah. All seven billion of you. I, I have to go empty my inbox now. Uh, why wouldn't they censor his name? I don't know. I don't know. It's public information. So that's why I put it out there. Sorry. Um, big brain theory. This is a couple of NSA CIA counter ops. Yeah. I don't know. I have some rope I'd like to donate. Yeah. <laughs> for yeah. Hanging yourself out there. Uh, Bear spirit says, as soon as I saw the new, I thought you would uh, do a presentation on this. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was going to do this. I actually found this out. Uh, from USNI News, and then I checked my email, and my inbox was chock full of links to different news stories. And I was like, "Why don't I try to get the actual criminal complaint so we can read from the source instead of what some news site says?" Now, granted, had I read a news site, we would have been done half an hour ago. So I'm sorry this went on so long, uh, but because it did, and my voice is going, we're going to end it now. Get this up on YouTube for everybody, um, and we'll be right back with more cold waters. Don't go anywhere.